Good morning, church. Welcome to our online worship service. We're so glad to have you to join us today. Come and don't worship with us. Some trust in chariots, some trust in horses, but I trust in the name of the Lord. Glory to God. I need you like the ocean needs the waters or it will run dry. I need you like the many stars above need the setting of the sky. I need you like tomorrow needs the hours of today to pass by. Lord, I So hear my humble cry. Help me say it. We need the old. We need thee. Yeah. And thank you all for joining us with our online worship. Can we give the Lord a hand praise for Minister Derek Webster who just blessed us with song and praise. Let me tell you, we're so excited that you have decided to join us on today. Let's go to the word of God. In Romans 8, verse 18, it says, For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. I want to talk this morning or this afternoon.
afternoon or whenever you're watching this, I want to talk about the other side of suffering, the other side of suffering. Can I tell you that we are in the season in which the church and the body of Christ enters into the suffering with Jesus Christ. I want you to know that as Jesus is making his way to Calvary, understand that Jim Bishop in his book, The Day That Christ Died, says that the crucifixion was not just merely a crucifixion, but it was indeed a massacre. He talks about all that Jesus' body went through physically while dying there on the cross. He says that his intercostal muscles began to grow faint and his pectoral muscles began to spasm and carbon dioxide filled his lungs such that all he could do were utter words like, like, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. And I thirst and mother behold thy son and son behold thy mother. And then finally he said that it is finish. I want you to know that we are entering into that time of suffering with our Lord and our Savior Jesus Christ. Understand that not only uh, did Jesus suffer, but we also have our times of going through trial, trouble, and tribulation. I want you to know that this virus has hit the globe and many people around the globe are experiencing a moment of test trial and suffering. I want you to know that the statistics show that 50% of Americans would probably contract this virus. It is, it is so impending that understand that people are now being sick and catching this virus and not able to function at full capacity. There have been deaths because of this virus. But I want you to know that the word of God says that after you have suffered for a while, then the glory of God shall be revealed. I want you to know know that that's what Paul is talking about here in this given text. Paul is talking about the time that he went through suffering. Perhaps when Paul mentions this word for I reckon that the sufferings of the present time are not worthy to be compared to the glory that shall be revealed. Understand that Paul is now reflecting back on his own life. To reckon means to calculate, to count, uh, to take an account of. So when he says that I reckon he is reflecting back on his life. I believe that perhaps Paul thought about the time when he had the thorn in his flesh. You remember that time when Paul had the thorn in his flesh and he prayed to God three times that God will remove the thorn. But God sent word back to Paul and says, Paul, don't worry about your thorn for my grace is sufficient for thee. I don't know about you, but I thank God for grace over my life. Grace that covers me. I'm so glad the way the theologian described it. The theologian said that grace is merely snow covering manure. Don't you know that that's interesting that he talks about grace as being snow covering manure because there's one, two things about snow that covers manure. One, you can't see it. And two, you can't smell it. I just want you to know that I am so thankful for grace today because there are some things in my life that I have been through that you can't see. And there's some stench that God has taken away from me that you can't even smell. Somebody, even right where you are, you just ought to grab somebody or just give somebody a fist bump and say, I thank God for grace. Grace that woke us up this morning and grace that started us on our way and grace that will continue to cover us as we're going through this time. Paul says that, that he, he reckons, perhaps he thought about the time when the thorn was in his flesh. He thought about the time when he was whipped 39 times. He thought about the time when he had gone through trial uh, before Agrippa and Festus and Felix. He thought about all of the times that he'd gone through something and he says, for well, I have reckoned that the sufferings of this present time shall not compare, compare unto the glory that is revealed unto us. Let me tell you something, that in this life, all of us have to go through something. But I want you to know that as you're going through whatever it is that you're facing, that God is setting, up, setting, setting things up for him to be revealed. I want you to know that he talks about the glory of the Lord coming. That glory, that word is translated from kabod. Kabod, it's a weight. It's a weight. It's a weight that God has that sits upon us. God has a glory, a Shekinah glory that sits upon us. I want you to know that when the weight of God shows up, when God begins to throw his weight around, it doesn't matter what trial or test that you're going through. I want you to know that God will in the end get the glory. I'm thinking about that weight. That's what God is doing now. God is shifting weight. I was in the airport 
just a few weeks ago on my way to Baltimore, and I showed up with two bags. One was a small bag that had my clothes in it, and the other was a large bag that had books in it that I had to take to this particular assignment. I want you to know when I got to the airport, I put my bags on the scale, and my bags were overweight. As a matter of fact, one bag was over 100 pounds. The other bag was not quite even 30 pounds or 40 pounds. But anyway, but after I, we weighed the bags, the bags were too heavy. The lady said, sir, it's going to cost you $230 to ship these bags to where you're going. I said, ma'am, that's just too much. I don't have $230 to ship these bags with. And she said, well, that's what it's going to cost. When she stepped away from the counter, here comes another young man. He walks up. He says, sir, he said, let me tell you how you need to fix this. He says, you need to take some of the weight out of the big bag and put it in the small bag. He says, in the light clothes that you have in the small bag, put some of those clothes in the bag with the books, which is the big bag. He says, what I'm trying to tell you is just switch some stuff around in your bag. And don't you know, I sat there and I switched some of the stuff around. I put the books in the small bag and the clothes that was in the small bag in the large bag, and I shifted the weight. Don't you know that after I put them on the scales, this time everything was just like it needed to be. The weight was perfect. The weight was size, and I didn't have to pay $230. This lady said, all you got to do now is just give me $30 and go get on the plane. Can I tell you, all the way to that airplane, I started thanking God for shifting the weight. I want you to know that that's what's happening now in America and all over the globe. God is shifting the weight. God is taking what was small and making it large, and that which was large, he's downsizing, downsizing it and making it small. God is shifting the weight. Can I tell you, that's what some of you all are going through. You don't know why you're facing the trials that you're facing and the things that's going on in your marriage and in your home and with your children. God is just shifting things around. Sometimes it doesn't look like a fair shift, but God in the end shall get the glory. I want you to know he's been revealed, and, and when God is revealed, when God shows up, the revelation ought to give us some inspiration. God is being revealed. Paul says, for I reckon that the sufferings of this present time shall not compare to the glory that shall be revealed. Oftentimes, suffering is a sign that blessing is on the way. And when God reveals, understand that something ought to be revealed out of you, your joy ought to come alive. I wish I had somebody in here who understood the, the power and the purpose of joy. I'm so reminded of David when David got the Ark of the Covenant back. He was marching through the streets and every six steps he took he had to stop and give God praise and glory. I want you to know that there are times when God will show up with his glory. I wish I had some help in here. There are times when God will show up with his glory and when he shows up with his glory you can't keep it to yourself there are times when God will show up and put something on the inside of you a revelation that will make your faith stronger there are times when your faith ought to come alive you this is a time of the year and a time of this season and what we're going through right now we need more faith we need to walk by faith and not by sight I want you to know that this is the season in which God is calling us to, to bring forth our faith. I wish I had some help in here. I want you to know that faith, uh, faith is that which will keep us strong. Faith is that which will allow us to sustain and, and go through these trials knowing that in the end we shall give God the glory. I want you to know that in the Old Testament that whenever the death angel started passing by, I want you to know that they would just put blood over the doorposts. Can I tell you that there is, there is a power in his blood that shall protect us and that shall sustain us. But don't forget that the blood protected everybody that was in the house. If you came outside of the house, there was no telling what could have happened. But if you stayed in the house, that's where the blood covered. Can I tell you all that as we're going through this virus, I want to encourage somebody to, to be careful and to quarantine yourself and to stay as protected as you can. But understand that all of us who believe in Jesus Christ, we are covered by the blood of Jesus. I don't know what family member you're next to, but if you can just bump them with a fist, 
this and tell them this house is covered by the blood of Jesus. Can I tell you that as we are going through trial and as we're going through suffering, that this present suffering shall not compare to the glory that shall be revealed. That's what Jesus was trying to show us as he was making his way to Calvary. I want y'all to know that as I move to a close, he was on his way to Calvary. And the Bible says that he was tried from judgment hall to judgment hall. And they put, they put, they put him through a trial and they tried to find him guilty of his own innocence. But can I tell you that Jesus endured the time. And don't you know that after he endured, he willingly went into a season of suffering. And don't you know, church, that as he went through suffering, uh, one day they had to hang him on the cross. And they hung him high. And they stretched him wide. I know you're at home right now, but I wish we can just have a little church. They hung him high. And they stretched him wide. And they put nails in his wrist. And nails in his feet. But he died, I said he died, he died until bad times got better, until the sun, the S-U-N, had to go down because two suns couldn't shine at the same time. He died upon that cross, but I'm so glad that his present suffering ended up with glory in the end because though he died, he got up with all power said all power in his hand wherever you are you ought to just praise him because on the other side of suffering God has a blessing for you on the other side of suffering God is healing you on the other side of suffering God is bringing you through say yes say yes say yes say yes I feel better so much better since I laid my burdens down, is there anybody in here that can glorify God? Say yes. Oh, say yes. He's all right. He's all right. This present suffering shall not be compared to the glory that shall be revealed. God is doing a work. And I want you to know that he's revealing some things to us. Understand that all the time, God has been with us. He has stood by our side, and he's standing by our side right now. Can I tell you, if you're trying to make a decision for the Lord, today is a good day. You don't have to be in a church, a physical church, because it's a decision that you confess out of your heart. Romans 10, 9 says that if thou... Uh, confess with thy mouth the Lord Savior Jesus Christ and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead thou art saved right where you are in your living room in your kitchen in your home while you're driving a car while you're at work you can be saved right now just accept him in your life and receive him as your Savior would you please go with me to prayer God we thank you right now for what you have done through this word the strength that you have given we pray that those who want to accept you as Savior, that they would accept you today. Right where they are, God, save them and deliver them. Meet them where they are hurting. Meet them where they, where they lack and show forth yourself strong. And we thank you now and we give you glory. In the name of Jesus, we do pray. Let the Redeemer of the Lord together say amen. Listen, let me tell you that you can go to our website share this message you can view this message at any time go to our website union baptist church wsnc.org is right there on the screen please share that website with your friends your family and go to the link that says online worship and you can pull down other powerful sermons that we have there other powerful messages and other inspirations we ask that you would now continue to join us in our phone line worship on every Saturday morning at 9 o'clock p.m. The number is right there in front of you. We ask that you would join us in our phone line worship and we ask that you would, 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 would help us with our obligations financially. We're going to ask Deacon Hemphill to come now and just 
to give an appeal to you as we would receive our offering. We need your help. I'm asking that every member, every visitor, if this message touched you, I'm asking that you would sow into our ministry. You can contact our website right there, unionbaptistwsnc.org, and there's a way for you to give online. We thank you for joining us, and God bless you. And we're going to ask Minister Derek Webster to continue to bless us with music, and Deacon Hempel will come and be a blessing to your life with an appeal. God bless you. We thank God for that powerful word that we just heard. And now is the time, church, that we show God our love by giving our tithes and our offering. And Malachi says, bring your full tithe into the storehouse that it might be food for my house. God loves us, church, and we have to show our love by taking care of his house. We know that God is love and we thank him for all that he's done for us. In these times, we need God even more. So bring your tithes and offering. On the screens, you will see where you can use technology to pay your tithes and offerings. And between the hours of 10 and 12 on Sunday, those that are not using technology can come by the church and drop off your tithes and offering. Remember, I promise you that if you take care of God's house, he will take care of your house. Amen. and thank you all for tuning in. I want you to know we'll be back with you with more services online. God bless you and stay covered under the blood of Jesus. Now unto him who is able to keep us from falling to present us fallers before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. Now unto him to the only wise God our Savior be glory, majesty, dominion and power now henceforth and forevermore. God bless you and I love you.